Hey mushroom fans, um, I know it's been a little bit of time since uh, I did a video. Um, I've actually did a couple but I just erased them. I didn't think that they were, I don't know, important enough for you guys to watch. Plus I was looking a hot mess, let's keep it real. Um, okay so today I wrote down some things because you know I can go on and on in a tangent but a couple things. The reason why I didn't post, um, I actually went out to St. Louis to see my friend TR. It was an awesome visit. I didn't do any videos there. I just wanted to spend time with my buddy, get as much knowledge as I could from him. Um, as you guys know, his time is very, very little. So if you're emailing him or, or messaging him, uh, if you don't get a response, it's it's not, <laughs> don't take it personal. It's just the man is running a huge business. So, you know, anyways. So anyway, so I did that. Um, and uh, I've got a kid that is sick. He's had the flu since Monday. I only say that because this video is going to be how much time it actually takes uh, for you to, to run a mushroom business. Forget running it, kind of starting, starting the business because you know a year or two years from now things could be a lot different. But this first, call it six months, eight months or however long it's been, this has been my, my, my time. So the, the first thing, I feel like I'm handcuffed to this place, like literally handcuffed. If you're a person that travels, if you do like long weekends or, you know, whatever, this is not the job for you. Let me just tell you, unless you have someone else that is not necessarily full time, but they can come like daily or at least a few days a week, um, someone reliable, this is not the job for you. Um, this is my biggest stressor is not being able to leave this place. So top things, uh, I have five things that take up the most amount of time when you're doing this as a business, forget as a hobby, but if you're doing this as a business, whether it's farmer's markets or for chefs or, or even wholesale. Number one, if you don't have an automatic watering system for your humidity, which I don't currently, and I choose not to do that. My new grow, I'm moving May 1st, um, my new grow will have automatic um, watering. But um, I don't have it right now, so I have to fill literally my, my totes, my water totes, I have to fill them with water with five gallon buckets. I cannot go longer than, let's call it 20 hours, 22 hours at best, without um, my humidity level dropping. I just came in here today, um, it was at 66% humidity, which is no bueno, but I have, um, like I said, a sick kid, he's throwing up, he's got the flu, 105 degree fever. It, <laughs> mushrooms, you know, they come second. So, so the, the biggest thing is, yeah, you literally have to come every single day without water. Um, the second biggest thing, I'm going to do all this like in terms of batching as a whole, but batching your blocks is a huge time commitment. It can be, if, if you don't, let me back that up. It, it is a big time commitment. It's even more of a big time commitment if you're doing everything by hand like I am now. In my new place, uh, I'm getting automation. I'm getting a batch mixer and a bagger. Praise the Lord. Um, so that will cut down, it will cut down on time and I'll be able to batch a, a lot more. Like right now, my batches in this, you can't even see it behind me, but I've got my uh, 55 gallon mixer, I'm, I'm sorry, 55 gallon sterilizer right behind me. I can only do 20 10, bag, 10 pound bags in there. So if you do the math, best case scenario, you get two pounds out of every single block. Now a single block goes wrong, now a single block goes below, you know, two pounds is, um, is uh, once you're dialed in, you should get about two pounds, depending on the species, per block. Um, I use one and a half pounds just because I like to be on the conservative, st conservative side when I'm estimating, but, but let's just use two pounds for easy math. So one batch for me, 20 bags, should equivocate to 40 pounds of mushrooms, which is not nearly enough as I need. Um, I'm doing about 120 pounds a week right now, so I'm like batching my little heart out. The only way to do that is if I don't miss a day. I literally have to be on point with it. I haven't been on point with it. Why? Because I went on uh, some trips. <clears throat> I went to see my buddy Brad in Boston, which set me back a little bit of time. I still would do it all over again, but it set me back a little bit of time. I missed like two batches then. I went to see my home with TR. I was gone, uh, I don't know, three, four days for that. Missed that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually going back. I'm buying some more blocks from TR. Um, just to hold me kind of over and, and make up for that lag. So that's a, a good way, you know, if you do get behind and you need it because chefs are relying on you or whatever, 
you know, there's there's several places that you can buy blocks from. I do mine from TR. Um, you know, your profit, your overall profit, obviously, on those blocks is not going to be as much as they are if you do it all yourself. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And if you're starting and you want a, you know, a big um, set of blocks just to like learn as much as you can, like get thrown in with the wolves. That's how I recommend doing it. That's how I did it. My my friend Brenda, holla Brenda, I hope you're watching. She just did it. She's out in Texas. And um, she got blocks from TR and like it's just like, wow, this is painting, this is it. Does this look right? Does this, you know, and that's, for me, that's the way to do it. Uh, okay, three. Harvesting time. Um, oh, hang on. Let me go back to the sterilizer. So what do you do around this whole sterilizer situation? So what I did is I bought a second sterilizer. I haven't uh, opened that yet because I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell it. It's brand new, still in the wrapper. If anyone is interested in a 130 gallon sterilizer, um, message me. Uh, don't message me here on the comments. Email me. Oh shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. A red cardinal just ran into the window. I don't know if you heard that. God, it scared the hell out of me. Um, Y'all know I'm in the middle of the woods out here. So anyway, so I bought a second sterilizer. Uh, the 130 should be, a, it should get about 50 bags in here, which again is about 100 pounds. Even with both of them running though, that's 70 bags. Again, call it 140 pounds in a week. That's still not enough for me. I want to be able to just batch one day a week. I don't want to have to do it two, three times a week and be under the gun. So, um, so I'm going to do a whole different sterilization um, system, and which I may or may not do videos on that. But bottom line, you got to make sure that you account for how much sterilizer space that you have. Like, how many blocks can you get out of it, and realistically, how many times can you do that in a week? Uh, if all goes well, or if it doesn't go well, you know. So, okay, three, harvest. Harvesting is the fun part. I harvest every day. You pretty much have to harvest every day. What I've been doing, though, um, to kind of get around that so I can get one day off, um, or, or it, again, I don't get any days off. I have, to, I have to come in seven days a week, like no, seven days a week without my sterilizer running dry. Not my sterilizer, God, it's been a long day. Without my uh, humidifier running dry. So... Um, harvesting, just to get out of harvesting, if I'm like, you know what, the shrooms can wait, let it get down to 60 or 70, which is not good, but if you need a day off, you need a day off. Um, what I will do, let's say on a Friday, is harvest really heavy. And what I, what I mean by that is obviously harvest everything that needs to be harvested, but things that are, you know, could still go another day or 36 hours to get, you know, nice and big to get the most out of it. Yeah, I might harvest a block that is only at one pound, you know, because it could still get bigger. Um, I'll just go ahead and be like, you know what, I want Saturday off, my kids got a lacrosse game or, you know, whatever. Um, just harvest the heck out of everything so you know, okay, I, I need to come back first thing Sunday morning, but at least, you know, I'm, I'm leaving for Saturday. So, um, yeah. Four, deliveries. So I'm very fortunate, I have a lot of chefs now. Um, most of them, I, I've got like three different areas that they're in. They're all in like one area, one side of town downtown now you know I've got uh, and then I've got some like kind of stores like uh, like I got high in um, butcher shops and stuff and they're in a different area so um, one's like close to me but anyway the time it takes to deliver so while school's been out one of my, my, my biggest customers my biggest chefs just so happen to be near my kids school uh, one of the I got three kids are in three different schools so one of my kids schools they're near all the restaurants so I've been like timing it out so that I can do all my deliveries, chit chat with my chefs if they have time or whatever, I can let them know what I've got coming up and then make it back to the carpool line that starts at three o'clock. You know, I'm like that kind of chick, right? So, um, you know, so I kind of do a twofer, get all that in, but you know, you gotta count in delivery time. Delivery time generally for a restaurant, I would say probably no earlier than 10 a.m. Well, it just depends on the chef, especially if you wanna see the chef <clears throat> which a lot of times I want to see the chef because again this is a relationship business you got to have products that are on point but you also want to make sure that you are staying in front of the chef or at least if you've got a really good employee you know th there's still nothing like you they want to see the grower but whatever um, so I try to get there when my chefs are there you know between 12 and 3 o'clock even like 11 11 and 3 o'clock is usually when they're there so that's when I try to make my deliveries but you got to account for that time because if you're going all over town forget about it and don't drive anywhere and do deliveries for less than $100 if they want an order for less than $100 and you're willing to do that they need to come to you 
or they can meet you at another spot like if you're doing a farmers market that's one thing that a lot of other growers could do and what I can do if someone just wants you know five pounds or something like that just say yep you can buy it I can't I'm not gonna do deliveries for less than a hundred but I'll bring your five pound order you know which is called 50 bucks at ten dollars pound I'll bring it with you to the Kenilworth market I'm gonna be there on Tuesdays or you can send you know one of your guys you know over to, to, to pick it up that is a really good way to get around the delivery so it doesn't make you look like an asshole but, but they know that you're about business, you know, not just, you know, if you're just coming over for a pound or two, they know you're desperate. Um, and you know you're desperate at that point because you're like, why would I be driving all the way over here? So, um, so delivery. The last thing, the fifth thing is farmer's markets. So the reason I like, so first I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do farmer's markets because a lot of times they're on the weekend. Um, and, you know, like I said, I got three kids, they're all doing sports and stuff, and I don't want to miss out on that, right? Well, you're pretty much going to make double what you make with restaurants than you're going to with, with compared to what you're going to make at a farmers market. So you know you can sell a half a pound at a farmers market for call it eight nine dollars, sometimes even ten dollars, just depending on what your market is. You know, uh, did I say that? Yeah, for a half a pound. Sorry, that's what you would charge your chefs for a pound. You know, so um, because you're selling at much smaller volume. Again, you're only selling half a pound. Chefs ordering like ten pounds. You know, and uh, you know it's the whole uh, you order more, you, you pay less in the end. So, farmers markets now they generally, if you've got a three-hour or four-hour farmers market, add on an hour before and an hour after. So that makes a six-hour time commitment. That's a big chunk of time, right? Now it's if you got a good market, it's worth your time because you're going to get compensated very well. But you got to That's pretty much if, if if it's on during a weekday, you're you're. You know, if you're doing an eight-hour workday, that's kind of shot because also th that's just when you have to be at the market. You have to spend, you know, time preparing for that market, putting your stuff, you know, in the boxes and the court boxes and making it look pretty and making sure that you have enough of things and you know, loading everything in the coolers and all that. I'll probably do a video on that. Probably not this week. Uh, this week, I don't know. I'm gonna do it sometime on how I prepare for a farmer's market. But yeah, just doing the days that you have market. Call that day just just a market day. Um, you're not getting a whole lot else done unless you're going way over eight hours. So that's the things probably at least for me that take the most amount of time. I'm going away, right? I'm gonna go away for Fourth of July week. I was gone, you know, to see TR. I was lucky when I went to see TR. Uh, my son works for me, and my husband kind of knows a little bit, so I, you know, was able to let them take care of things. Some things got jacked up, you know, I love them, they, you know, they were able to hold it down, but things obviously were not how they should be, and it, it took me a while to, like, kind of get caught up from what they had kind of done wrong a little bit. But, um, you know, so, so luckily, you know, if you're just going away by yourself, hopefully you have someone in your house, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, to take care of it. If your whole family is going away like mine is, I really gotta ha I have to find someone that can come every single day or I'll be in my new space by that now so maybe just you know three times in a week or something hopefully it's something like that um, to harvest and check on things but you have to plan on having someone else other than yourself and preferably other than in your family in case you all go to, away together you know stuff happens you've got to go to a funeral or whatever who's gonna watch it again if it's just for you you're just growing for yourself you just be like alright well I guess I'm just not getting mushrooms in my my meals when I get back from the funeral but if you're doing this for a business you have to plan on contingency stuff so just know that uh, you, you are it is an umbilical cord this job is an umbilical cord you are stuck to it every single day so I hope this was helpful uh, I'm just trying to keep it real and make sure that people know what they're getting into because I didn't really realize it at first I would have still done it but you know it's kind of a shock when you realize like damn I can't leave this place but uh, all right, peace and love, Wakanda forever. If you want to see what I use in my uh, my grow, check out my kit page. It's in um, it's in the link there below. And uh, stay real.